Yeah, I want to give credit to where credit's due. And it's really helpful to have a business like the Pierce Brothers and Curtis and Mike and Whitey and Clinton all working there. And I want to show you what they did for me. Look at that craftsmanship. Mike at Pierce Brothers welded that up. And it's as good as new. The last time you've seen that, uh, it was bent. They wanted, you can find a part, but Pierce Brothers, they fixed hundreds of those tongues on those 7,000 John Deere's. And they straightened that right back out, just as good as new. Over here at the disc, Clinton straightened that axle out last year. Put it back straight when I bent it. So my hat's off to the crew at Pierce Brothers Welding. And without them, boy, you'd be up a crick. But if you can break it, they can fix it. it uh, and I also want to show you something else that Mike did. <laughs> that tongue is as straight as it was before I bent it. And Mike down there just got back from back surgery and he's back at welding. And he did a fantastic job. Oh yeah, here's another thing the boys at Pierce Brothers in Indianola did. They cut this link on, on, off and refurbished that because the ball wore out. And it, they're just, you know, Curtis down there, his, him and his crew can fix anything. They took that link arm off, repaired it, and now the ball fits in there again because it was wore out. and. They do that on a day-to-day -day basis. This was some artwork. Mike made that triangle so I could put those deer on there. And so, if you can think it, those craftsmen down there, they can make it. And I really want to thank Mike for his talent. I showed him what I wanted, and he made that, and I could hang all three of those deer on there. I just. Pierce Brothers, Indianola, Iowa, the professionals. Well, it's Memorial Day weekend. My hat's off to all the veterans. But I'm working on the planner after the fact. And I got some sporadic seating. It, uh, and it's because of the no-till situation. And when you run in there with the corn stalks, you know you disted them up. Doesn't mean the coulters are going to chop them up fine enough for your opening wheels on your planter. And when that happens, they close and the, you make a trench, but it's, it's, it's not the way it's supposed to be. So anyhow, I'm going to show you. This is the last one we had to take off. Started with that one yesterday. I got these two done. And this is the final fourth one. And I'll show you what you got here and this is the less of the two evils but this area right here is all plugged full of dirt and this won't go, this will not turn uh, it turns but really really hard and that's your disc openers and the seed drops down in there in that furrow but anyway it wasn't doing that. So I want to show you how hard and how much dirt was in there. And for, you know, no-till's cool, but I'll tell you what, they don't show you the pain in the ass that can be when it plugs up. Yeah, and the reason I'm working on that right now is because you got the enthusiasm. It was broke. There's no use of putting it off. And we'll go about getting it off. It's, it don't take too long. Sometimes it might pop off, but like I say, it's all plugged. It's all plugged full of mud right now. And uh, what happens is grass and stuff gets in there, binds up, wraps itself around, and your opening wheels are plugged. Yeah, that's a uh, food plotting. I, I just get a kick out of how some of these so-called experts walk around with their personality and, and 
You, you wonder, you never see them have any dirt on their hands like that. You, you know, if they're all uh, full of, oh, so much technology and so much knowledge and everything. But you know, you never actually see them dirty. <laughs> so uh, it makes you wonder just how much work they actually do. And, and, and then they uh, want to tell just seeing the two hands of a 70 year old, 71 year old man still working, still getting the job done. If man made it, I can fix it. And thank God this stuff don't have computers. It does have a monitor on the feed, but uh, I don't use it because it just, you can get out and check the seed yourself. But what was happening, you're going to notice how hard. It's going to be to get this wheel off. Now, like I said, right now you can't you can't hardly physically turn that wheel. See all that dirt that's coming out of there? Maybe you can't see that dirt. That's what's all wedged up in there. And that's why it's making that wheel so hard to turn. You can see it pouring up in there. That's what you have to contend with sometimes. Food plotting. Oh yeah, everybody wants to be a food plotter. Yeah, they sure do. And you got every schmuck trying to sell you something and tell you how easy. I see some clown had a deal. Ten dollar food plot. Really? <laughs> Ten dollar food plot. Anyhow, that wheel should be coming off here in a minute. Oh, that, that was Turn it a little bit now. I possibly can get the screwdriver wedged up in there. But I just wanted to show you the aggravation that food plots can bring you. Well, we'll go back. That should be about ready to go off. And I know there's probably a million ways of getting these off of here. There we go. It popped loose. Now here's what I want to show you. I can get underneath there. Finally popped loose. Well, somewhat. <laughs> I guess I spoke before I should have. Anyway, we're gaining on it. There we go. Bingo. We got it off. All that dirt was wedged in there and you can see the bean seed and that's why the openers wouldn't work right. They were just dragging through the dirt. All this is grass material and I got some more over here to show you. Now there's residue you can still see it's still green from the 13th but those as those wheels turn around one way if they get this grass in there they just wrap themselves around that axle that you can see the axle there and it just gets it tighter and tighter and tighter see how big that chunk was smooth packed like a rock so I just wanted to share this with you you know like I said <laughs> There's so much work to food plotting. <laughs> so many people, they don't have hands like this no more in America. They, all they do is have their, their brain in their hand. And uh, they have no, no ability to use these other than poke buttons at a video game or uh, punch, a, 
punch something up, but when it comes to manual labor, this country is falling farther and farther behind. You can see the beans that never made it out there, and there's a big packed chunk. And uh, it was really plugged up, that's for sure. All four of them were like that. That coulter up there in the front is somewhat a no-till coulter because it's like a, it's not a disc. But this is supposed to cut that up. But, you know, it's an old style coulter and it didn't quite get the job done with the residue. And like I say, people, I see them planting through stuff that's amazing, but they must have a whole lot better planter than what I got here. So, uh, and this is just four food plots, but not, you know, just wanting to educate people. Yeah, we'll get some dust and noise going here. Getting that blowed out, that seed comes down that tube, and uh, you want to make sure that that was floating, which it wasn't, it was jammed up too. So, anyway, we're gaining on it. Got these wheels all scraped down and lubricated. Get the mud off of them. Called experts anywhere they want, right out in the middle of the street, when they want to start talking cheap shit. Because that's all they're trying to sell to get reviews. Because everybody's interested in how cheap can I get something? That's become the American way, unfortunately. But not in the non typical Norwalkian world. You're gonna play, you're gonna pay. See, that's how these wheels are supposed to be clean like that, but they'd be sh chrome shiny if you did enough acreage with them. But to start it up and try to run them mere five acres of beans on them, it, 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 you're not... If it ain't maintained on the get-go, which it wasn't, and that's, I got no one to blame but myself. An ounce of prevention before you go to the field. <laughs> it's worth a hundred pounds a year. The, the seed's already in the ground, and I, uh, it, it's germinating, but it could have been a lot better. So, the way it is. Flip that dude over and polish it. See how shiny this blade is? Those all should be that shiny. But uh, the problem is, when you're only doing minim minimal acreage, you're not going to get that the scour. If you go to the front line and your rifle misfires, just for your lack of maintenance on it, you got no one to blame but yourself. Plus, Sometimes the conditions that you put your equipment in aren't quite 
conducive to that and therefore you end up with minimal results. So let's get the wheel put back on. Those little washers that I put on, that's an adjustment to keep the clearance in there. But it, the clearance is all right, it was just wedged full of mud. So you could either add, add more or take more off. Now you can see how that wheel's turning. That's how it was supposed to have turned, as it was planting. And like I say, the reason I'm making this footage is to drive the point home that no matter what seed you plant or whatever you do, if your equipment's not maintained when you go to the front lines, you're going to have that kind of result. And now if it was in a if I was in the farm industry on full scale, you definitely would have that done because you couldn't stand the downtime uh, that that created. But I want to show you how this wheel is supposed to turn. Now, you can see, I can turn it with one hand. When it was all, that's how it was properly maintained, it would have worked. This opens up the furrow, the seed drops down through that tube. These are the closing wheels, plus you've got the gauge wheel on the back to keep it at the right height. I got that off right now. But these are closing wheels, and they, they close the furrow. But here's how it was supposed to be turning. And unfortunately, they were all bound up. By the way, this is the lock, the safety position that that's supposed to be on. Don't ever crawl underneath of that planter unless that's in that transport position. Because right now, I can't move that pin because what's happened is the cylinders, they leak down and it's got tension on it and it's locked. Well, that same cylinder with the lines, if they blew a line under pressure and you were underneath it there, you, well, you wouldn't be doing the filming right now. Now that I've lifted it up, started the tractor up, you can see you can move this pin now. I can pull that out with one finger, push it out of there. Don't ever crawl under any machine unless you have the safety device in position. Well, last and least, the actuator was leaking also. I noticed the hydraulic fluid was running out of it. I mean, everything was going south on me that day. You notice this is leaking hydraulic oil. That's the actuator that lifts and lowers the, the marker arms. Now, when you, we've already unhooked this marker arm. It's pretty simple. It's just two bolts. Take two bolts out and it comes down. But you, when you want to work on one of these and it, on that actuator, you want to put a long wire because you've got to pull this all the way through the machine, through that tube. And then you got to have an extremely long wire or, or rope, whatever you want to use, to pull it back through the length of that tube because you're going to pull, you're going to pull this apparatus all the way almost out down to that end and uh, you wouldn't have any way to get the tube back up in there I mean I've done it but boy it's an SOV and uh, so let's go take the actuator out and see where it was leaking it doesn't take long to remove this actuator out of here you just take these two nuts off and uh, pull it out that's why it's essential you have to have that wire on the other end. And this was leaking really bad. 
and I'd raise it and the oil would just squirt out. It, uh, so either the fitting is loose or the line broke. It, uh, the reason I'm doing this is just to show you that behind the scene of food plotting. It's not all smiley white teeth and uh, simplicity. It's hard work and breakdowns. Now all this stuff went south on me on planting day and there was no way you would have had the time uh, well especially with the forecast that they were predicting which they were wrong but I still wouldn't have had the time because it was raining by noon on Friday but uh, but it sure put a lot more stress on a person. Anyhow now this is what this what we're going to pull out of here is what grazes and lowers the rest of them. And it's got a heck of a leak on it. Not that hard to pull out. Bill Dixon will enjoy this video because he's a farm boy for real. And, uh, and he works with John Deere. So it takes a lot of, you know, here. Here could have been the culprit, I hope. Anyway, we'll get it on. Oh boy, it's hard to say. Yeah, it could have just been that loose fitting. But anyhow, you can see all the oil on it and on my hands. It just, I don't see any damage to a line in there. So it was probably at this fitting, this is where it's the cleanest and that, that's probably where it was blowing out, that fitting right there. And this is an annual maintenance thing anyway because if you don't take that out of there and block it off, the mice will build a nest in there and chew those lines off. So I'll just see how tight this line was. Probably wasn't very tight. If I can take it off my pliers, I know it would help. Well, well. Tighter than that. Yeah, it wasn't very tight. So that was probably the culprit. And like I say, the lines don't look. The lines don't look up. But I can see where the, I was pushing it out right there. Uh, I could have tightened that up. Because if it had been a blown line, it would have really, it would have drained the, the hydraulic fluid in the tractor. But it was just fitting more than likely. It wasn't tight. Anyhow, like I say, what we're taking out here, this apparatus right here, is called the actuator. And that's why you've got to have that actuator out. This is the necessity anyhow to take out for storage because the might oh there was still oil in there. <laughs> it, uh, anyhow you have to take that out for the simplicity of it. If you don't, you're going to have mice build up in there. So and you don't want that. Well I hope you found this somewhat interesting. I know it's a long ways from hunting, but it is food plotting 101. And uh, maintenance is really critical, and you're going to have breakdowns. And, uh, so just be prepared for that. Uh, you don't see that on a lot of these videos. And I'm showing you real-time uh, stuff from the openers plugging up to the actuator leaking, which I thought that was what the problem was, but I had to take it out anyway. Now I'll show you my mouse prevention for that. Now here's why you have that wire. Because the end of that is clear down the other end. This way lets you pull it back out. Which is a necessity. So you have to put that wire in there. So you can pull the cable back through. Yeah, this is my mouse, pre mouse prevention. You take this piece of 
screen wire and you put it over the opening there and this I don't care where you're at if they're in the barn or wherever the mice will find their way because that they'll fill that thing clear full of trash eat eat the line there's a metal line in there they'll piss on it and rust it out so if you get the when you get the screen wire up there uh, it's pretty simple and then I'll bring the closing wheel back and that'll hold it tight and I've never had a mouse get in there because they really raise havoc with that you can see the, the screen wire there and I'll bring that marker arm back forward and pin it back tight and there's no way the mice can get through that wire Seals that hole up perfectly. Get this in there. Oh, come on. There you go. Put the pin back in it. No more mice problem. Completely locked out of there. You can't get through there because they will fill that. They will fill that hole completely full of acorns, nuts, grass, whatever, and it'll be a solid mess. And I don't know how many people with 7,000 planters run into that. You know, like I say, even when it's stored in a building. But that this simple formula and this piece of wire all over those holes and just close the door with the marker arm and you, you, you know you don't have to worry about them because if they they pissed on this one before and that urine is so acidic it rusted the line out and boy that line took about three to four hours to put in there uh, the rubber line they'll chew up and uh, pissing on the metal line it'll just corrode it and rust through but this is what solves that problem right there Good to go for winter. And, and a special thanks goes out to all you veterans. Uh, like I said, uh, that's what I knew Memorial Day was. Get my head back on here straight. But, uh, anyhow, the, the thank goes out to all you veterans. And like I said, uh, that's what Memorial Day was in my day. And, Back in the 50s, that's, people were selling and giving away poppies on every street corner. I don't even see that anymore. So, uh, well, nothing stays the same except for my dirty hands. Happy Memorial Day.